Next up, we have IAR Systems. So uh, this this will be fun. We have Felipe Torres on, who's a field applications engineer. Wave hi to the audience. Um, he's been at IAR since 2019. Before that, he was an applications engineer at Renesis and has lots of experience in the electronics industry in areas such as C, C++ compilers, code analysis, etc. So um, should be some fascinating stuff. Uh, Felipe, welcome. Thanks, Arthur. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Turn off my great. camera. It's great to be here. So, yeah. So, welcome. And this is tips and tricks uh, to boost the performance in modern uh, development workflows. Uh, I am Felipe Torrezan, Fields Application Engineer for IR Systems in Sweden. So our agenda for today is quite uh, straightforward. We will start talking a bit about the traditional uh, build processes and the bottlenecks involving those. And then we will move for ahead to the typical modern development workflows, the DevOps scenarios that we have seen uh, our customers using in the field, the popular choices and so on. And lastly, I will present to you the IR build tools for Linux. So let's start with the bottlenecks. This, uh, there are several bottlenecks involving uh, involved when you're using the traditional build processes, uh, especially when you have a huge uh, development team, many people working on different components, on different uh, release cycles. Uh, things can get really messy. And getting feedback on your code in that scenario is vital. It's, uh, and Initially, the, the compiler, the assembler, the linker, the build tools, and the tool chain, of course, can give you an early warning system of uh, rules that you might be breaking when you were writing your code. And, of course, uh, bugs are there. The bigger the project, the higher the chances there are bugs in the code. Then, static analysis, of course, it's very mainstream these days. Uh, everyone uh, is probably using, if not, it should, especially for embedded development. And uh, the problem with the traditional build processes is that when you get the feedback is almost as important as how you get it. So, and continuous integration comes to the rescue. Uh, it solves this problem, provides you with near instantaneous feedback on the code, excellent for code review, and the overall metrics of your code base immediately rises as the adoption occurs. Uh, it is a, it's cheaper than uh, hand testing when you go for automated testing like that, and the overall code quality becomes less expensive, good for the organization, and also good for the end customers as well. In the bottom line, uh, it will push better products uh, to the door and faster. So let's leave that behind. Let's move ahead to the typical DevOps uh, scenarios. Here you can see uh, an outline uh, of different components that might be part of uh, particular DevOps systems. There is a plethora of options here that uh, many different organizations choose uh, to use, uh, given their own reasons. But uh, let's narrow down to the DevOps in the embedded scene. Uh, for this presentation, let's narrow down the, all those options to something simple to follow, easy to grasp. Let's start with simple objectives, such as starting by build the project. Of course, this is mandatory, let's say. Uh, and then analyzing the code quality of those projects. And lastly, 
uh, testing the projects. Three simple objectives to start with. And then uh, for that, what do we need? Uh, firstly, uh, obvious, the obvious one, the orchestrator. There are many. The popular ones are Jenkins and more recently GitHub, GitLab, many others. Then, of course, a version control system, which is typically Git nowadays. But others as Subversion or Mercurial are perfectly viable options as well, as there is a lot of code base using those techs. Uh, lastly, we probably will be building many projects for many different architectures. Over time, managing these two versions related to different architectures, different products might become a nightmare and a daunting mission. So one way to manage those different, different set of tools and make, make them available whenever required is to use container technology such as Docker. Today, we will mention the possibilities that we have seen in the field uh, and that are highlighted in this slide here. Starting with Jenkins, you can find more information on Jenkins.io. It's a self-contained open source automation server that can use, be used to orchestrate repetitive technical assignments involving building, testing, and deploying software. It's Java-based, works pretty well, uh, and can be insta installed in many different ways. Uh, could be a dev package if you are using a Ubuntu or Debian-based system. Could be Dockerized, no problem. Or you could even execute it from its web application archive. It's ultimately up to you how you will run it. Uh, it the great thing about Jenkins is that that ha it comes with lots and lots of different plugins that can extend its core functionality. This might be the root cause of its popularity. Then let's talk a bit about runners now. What are runners? It's sort of an orchestrator as well. You can use the runners to, uh, they are software that can perform a defined pipeline within their respective, respective continuous integration environment. And said that, uh, there is a way to make the runners uh, available from within the premises of your organization, and that's the self-hosted runners technology. They are they self-update and keep communication to services, complete uh, CI and DevOps services such as GitLab, GitHub. The advantage of using the self-hosted is that you can run it on your hardware of choice, where you have full control of what's going on for your build and testing pipeline. More recently, Bitbucket started to offer this kind of service as well, and they are, uh, as far as I've seen, they are uh, providing the service in beta stage for early adopters. Docker, uh, Docker is a way for you to containerize, uh, containerize software to uh, build, test, and deploy quickly with a pristine and reproducible, produ reproducible environment, which means that if you take a Docker file to create a certain image in 10 years from now, you can make the exact build environment and it's great to maintain projects, uh, co complex projects over time with different sets of tool chains, scripts, and so on. Uh, it's, a, it's a way for you to standard, standardize software and you can add, for example, different tool chains with different libraries in a certain container for a certain project under a certain uh, tool chain version and we use it later uh, in another machine or another build form uh, in that sense. And the advantage is that the containers are isolated from each other, so you don't get uh, a different version 
messing around with the version that you will need to use for a, a given project. And containers, in contrast with the virtual machines, they, serve, they share the same underlying guest OS. So it's compute, computationally cheaper and you, you won't be wasting uh, cycles for running three concurrent kernels at the same time, which this computational power can be used for the build purposes uh, that you already have. You can get more information on docker.com. And finally, the IR build tools for Linux. What are they? Well, the IR build tools are the same tools that you get from the Windows version, but they are running natively on Linux 64-bit from the command line. And basically you get the compiler, the linker, the assembler, the code stat analysis with uh, CSTAT. And also I would like to mention the IR command line build utility, known as IR build. The IR build is the easiest way for you to build a project if you started uh, creating uh, the project with the Windows IDE, you just grab the uh, EVP file and you are ready to go. You will build it from the command line without having to go into scripting anything as you would need to do with make, ninja, etc. Uh, which means that the compiler also can be used with those other build system, building systems. It's perfectly possible. It's up to you. Uh, our compiler, the same excellent code optimization that you have seen on Windows, they are present in the Linux version as well, as well as for the device support, which means that if you build uh, your project for a certain device on Windows and use the same version for Linux, you will get everything, the same uh, output, the same uh, device support, linker configurations, and so on. Uh, it comes with uh, it comes like a, a Debian package uh, for installation, and that makes very easy to deploy on containerized environments, uh, as we will see in a few minutes. Currently, it's available for ARM, RISC V, Renesas R850, and Renesas RX, and we also have uh, already functional safety editions available for ARM and R850. So how can you use the build tools from a Docker container? Uh, it's easy to install uh, on, an, on a, the IR build tools in a Docker image. Uh, and we provide a Docker file template ready to use so you can build Docker images with the IR build tools for Linux of uh, the architecture you are currently using and of the supported ones. So, and the Docker file is universal. So the same Docker file, with the same Docker file, you can create a uh, image for every supported architecture or version out there. Uh, and then, of course, as instead of providing a ready-made Docker image, we provide you with the Docker file so you can customize it to fit your own needs. And we have a tutorial available uh, at the IR Systems uh, github.com page under the bx-docker uh, repository. So you can try it right now. And here is the outline of how it looks. First, you install Docker, then you clone the repository, then you just build the image using the build script that we provide, just pointing the Debian package that you got. And then you unset any previously, previously set uh, aliases, and you set aliases to execute the uh, tools from the image. Uh, like that, just shooting the package and the version you want to use for the project that you want to build. And step six, you use IR build, point it to the EVP file to build the debug configuration of your choice. If you are uh, working 
uh, for several days in this project, every time you set the aliases and close the terminal, the options are going to be erased. So if you want to keep them persistent over time, you can use step seven here, which basically executes aliases set for the package and version you were using on your .bash RC profile. And now uh, we have a typical CI workflow using GitHub runners, which starts from the uh, origin production branch, where a developer usually will pull the change to his local production branch, where we will get the production grade codes into the IR embedded workbench IDE. Work then he will start working on a new feature or a bug fix or whatever needed and test it on its target device. Once he is satisfied with the results, he simply, he simply will take the code change to his commit to this uh, his local development branch, push the change back to the origin, and when he do, does that, uh, work, uh, uh, workflow file will trigger a GitHub action, and the GitHub action will start a Docker container to build the project, test it, and the output results goes for the code review, where it can be approved or reproved, uh, and this cycle, if you approve it, uh, it will go back to the production branch, and the cycle repeats itself as many times as required. We have a full tutorial available as well on our GitHub page under the IR systems, and then bx-self-hosted runners. Feel free to try. We have a similar workflow also available under another repository, name it uh, bxarm-jenkins. And lastly, uh, I would like to give you a few words uh, about uh, building and analyzing on Linux and why it's faster. Uh, when comparing a reasonably large project between the Linux and the Windows version of the same toolchain, we noticed that with a project with more than 500 C and C++ files, mixed code, there is assembly as well, not accounted here, uh, using the highest optimization level, which means that more computational power from the host is required to process that. We noticed that building on Linux takes 50% of the time and one quarter of the time to analyze uh, an already built project. And as you can see on the right uh, hand side of the slide, the more cores you have, the tools can take advantage and uh, spread across the different cores to build concurrently multiple build units. And you can save a lot of time in your continuous integration uh, on Linux. And in summary, uh, continuous integration is a trend, is unavoidable, and one of the best practices out there uh, nowadays uh, to raise the quality and reliability of your projects. And the IR tools for Linux integrates very well in many different scenarios, as you have seen. Uh, and of course, these options speed up and raise the quality for you and your organization. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have questions, please reach us uh, by using the email FAE at IR.com and more information here at IR.com dash BX. Thank you. Thanks, Philippe. Uh, if you want to turn your camera on, we can answer a few questions here. Uh, just so you know, I put the links to the tutorials in the chat window, so anybody who wants to go to those, those uh, URLs are in the chat window to make it easy for you. Um, Perfect. Philippe, we, we had a question. Can I download a ready IAR linker, Linux Docker image from Docker Hub or any repository? Well, uh that's an excellent question. Instead of providing you with the ready-made image, we gave you the Docker file, which is basically the recipe that, and basically everything you need to create the Docker image yourself. So you have full control over it. There are many different requests from the field. Yeah. Uh, another question, if I already have a build process using IAR embedded workbench, what benefits would I get from IAR build Linux? 
the biggest advantage, as I see, is the speed. Uh, on Linux, it, it builds faster and it analyzes faster. Of course, you get the same output, but uh, for uh, CI and CD standing points, uh, build times are usually very uh, important in, in this scenario, as we have seen. There was a question about the Bazel build system. They were curious if you'd had any thoughts on it or heard of it. A what? Bazel, B-A-Z-E-L. Bazel, okay, Google's build system. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this, is, uh, this is an interesting one, and we, we actually have customers using it, and so it's pretty well. It's, and we, have, we even have some customers using the build tools from uh, the build tools, no, uh, the DevOps uh, from Amazon as well and Bitbucket and Excellent. Azure. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a question about is the IAR Build Linux Edition Fusus certified? Absolutely. We, ha we also provide the IAR Build Tools for, uh, as I said, for, for Linux for ARM and for R850. There are more architectures coming. And the certified build tools uh, are certified by TubeSuit and validated according to various standards like uh, IEC uh, 61508, ISO 262, uh, and much more. All right, so it sounds like if we use your tools that it's going to be easier to do certification and going to run faster and be more portable. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> That's well, precisely it. <laughs> Thanks, Felipe. We appreciate your your uh, attendance today and your talk. It was fascinating, and uh, and we saw like earlier already some of the other talks have mentioned people are using your tool chain. So, yeah, that um, was great to hear. If if people have other questions, you know, put them in the question box or or send email to Felipe, and uh, and we'll move on to the next one. Thanks, Felipe. Thank you very much for having us.